upgrading the Durrani VT22 uh, software just to enable it to use the new VDP Connect app, uh, which is an upgrade from the Too Easy app already available. So first thing we need to do is just check the current firmware that's already on the monitor. So to do that, we're just gonna hit the settings button and then the about down the bottom. That there will tell us the software version that's currently available on the monitor. So that one there ending in 1055, that is the current firmware that's available. So to perform the upgrade, you do need to have the monitor already connected to the Wi-Fi, which will be down on this symbol down below here. So as long as it's connected and the server is connected, we can do this upgrade on the monitor. So first thing you're gonna need is a SD card, a micro SD card up to 32 gigabyte, and that just gets inserted into the back of the monitor. So to get this monitor off your wall, it effectively just slides up around about 10, 15 mil, and it will come directly off the wall, so it's held on by just a clip. So you'll see up the top corner of the monitor, there's an SD card slot. So I can put my thumb in there and push down, there's an SD card in there. So just a micro SD card. So those pins will face the front of the monitor. So it's gonna get inserted this way. So we just push it down in and using our thumb we can, do, or nail, we can just push down, you hear a little click. A little click when that's gone incorrectly. So once that's been done, we can go ahead and start the upgrade. So if we just go into settings, go in into install the setup, and then we go to page two up the top right hand corner. From here, we can do the firmware upgrade. So we just select that one there. Now the server we need to select, so we just touch that there with our finger, and we just type in IP address, so input IP address. The address we need to use is 47.74.84.120. So that's our update address that we need to use. And once we've got that in there, we're just hitting OK. And the download code won't need to change. So then we just hit check down the bottom. And that there will check that server for the available update. Now this update will always be available whether or not you have the latest firmware or not. Um, so even if you have upgraded, that's why it's always best to check what firmware you have. If it is already the latest, this will still download and install the firmware again for you. So it's always gonna be available in the cloud. So down the bottom, we just hit install. And then that will download there pretty quickly. So if you can periodically check the Durrani website for the under Durrani Touch uh, technical support, um, the current firm will always be listed there. So there's no real need, if your system is working fine, no real need to do the upgrade, um, but you can always just check to see if something else has come out, something that's new. That there will then install and just ask you not to turn the power off. So just waiting a few minutes for that to actually install. And we can just leave that SD card in the monitor. So once the download is complete, we just need to do a factory default of the monitor. So from here, just into settings, and then into general. If we go to page two, we're gonna see restore to default. So selecting restore to default, and restore factory default. Just need to select that twice, so one, and ask you to confirm, so twice. And then that there will freeze the screen and it will just do a factory default. So it just takes a minute for that to reboot. Uh, the screen will go black. Need to touch it to turn it back on. Once that's done, you would just need to go into the settings. And from settings, we just go into the wireless. So wireless is down on the left hand side there. Now the wireless password as default is 30613061. So we'll go ahead and enter that. And hitting okay. So once that's done, we just need to turn the Wi-Fi switch back on. And it's gonna bring up the terms and conditions there for you for the Wi-Fi access. So just have a good read through those terms and conditions there and hitting accept if we're okay. and that will turn the Wi-Fi back on. Now down the bottom you see disconnected. Now that will automatically try and reconnect to its last known network. If there is a problem with it reconnecting, uh, you might just need to go in and just reconnect with your WLAN setting in here. 
where it will search for your Wi-Fi networks and just input the password again. But it will remember the, pre the last one it was connected to. So once that's done, if we go back to the home page and onto the server icon down the bottom, what we want to do here is just hit use default. That just takes a quick second for that. And that there will just lock in your previous settings. All done. So that's just changed the server address um, and uploaded the uh, new firmware that's available to use on the VDP Connect app. So the upgrade has now been completed. And just the last thing we need to check is the call scene to make sure it's set up to divert. So just selecting the call scene down the bottom. Uh, normal use just works like a normal intercom. Um, down the bottom we have divert call always. Divert call if no answer means it'll ring the monitors inside the house for about 20 seconds first, then start calling mobiles. Uh, divert call always will call the monitor inside the house and your phones simultaneously. So we'll just put that onto divert call always. And everything is back to as it was before you did the upgrade. Uh, if you need to reset the time and date, just touching it down the bottom corner here and you just go through and just reset the time. see from the upgrade we have a new home screen um, just the help button there for you so selecting that there you'll get a couple of QR codes on the screen so you can scan those for any brochures and uh, troubleshoot manuals and troubleshooting and any Wi-Fi setup um, and any help videos there so that will take you directly to our website to our help channel and just touching the screen to go back to the home screen Once the Durrani Touch VT22 monitor has been upgraded, um, we can go ahead and install the VDP Connect app. So from the Play Store or the App Store, we're just going to be searching for VDP Connect. So once that's done, we can just open up that app and just to, uh, um, allow everything that it asks for. So access to photos. And allow for notifications. So it's going to take you to the configuration page for an account. Um, so basically from here, we're just going to hit the scan button down the bottom and we're going to scan the QR code that's on the monitor. So just hitting the scan button there and OK to access the camera. We then go to the monitor that we've just upgraded and that is the server button down the bottom in the middle of your screen. So touching that there, that will bring up the page with the QR code. And allow to use microphone, okay. Once we've scanned the QR code, uh, we're online effectively and ready to go. So you'll see up here, I'm actually on the 4G network, not on the local network. And we've got the connected status up the top here as well. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and just hit the home button. That there will dial into our door station. So there's a live view of the door station currently as we speak. So the layout here, um, you, we have the speaker button down the bottom, which we can toggle on and off to turn obviously the speaker on the phone on or off. Now we'll just hit the PTT button and that there will open up the audio. So hitting that there, we'll see the PTT come up. So just point your finger on that button there, you'll be able to hear at the front door station. So you can do this at the front door, you'll be able to hear yourself talk and release there. So lock one down the bottom, we'll unlock a lock if there's one connected to your door station as you see succeed on the screen and if you do have a second lock attached to this door station here we can unlock from there the button here on the side uh, that there will toggle between door stations if you have more than one door we just hit the hang up so we can also just test this on to the wi-fi so we'll flick off and flick the wi-fi on so now on wi-fi we can just do the same test so hitting the home button. We'll dial into the door station and we'll see we're on the local network now because we're on the Wi-Fi. And again, same, all the same buttons apply. Um, everything you need to do down here. And we'll just hang that up. 
So we have a look at a couple of quick settings before we go out and test the door station in, uh, in the app. So hitting the menu button up the top left hand corner. The account is what we've just configured. That's to scan the account onto the phone. Now just in settings, with the audio, um, it is preset there to be um, effectively the, the best scenario for most installations. However, all um, installs are a little bit different. So you might find you need to change just the microphone gain and the playback gain here, just to reflect uh, any uh, feedback noise or background noise that you may have depending on where your door station is. So we hit the back arrow there. So video, no need to touch anything in here. It'll be set to 264. We just need to leave that there the way it is. Now under call, um, with the um, Apple devices, there's two methods in which um, the app can call you depending on your preferences. So if we select call, we've got the options here. Um, so the, the incoming call timeout, you'll be able to talk for 45 seconds before the monitor effectively hangs up on you. You can change this time here. Um, no need to change the in-call timeout. It's not a use function for, for this scenario. So we've got the option here to accept early media. The door station um, or the, the touch intercom system will try and send a, a picture or a live video of whoever's at the front door uh, before you answer. So you can actually see who's there before you take the call. Uh, that all does come down to the, the Wi-Fi speeds that you've got in your house and the download speeds at the time of where you are. So if you're on 4G in one bar, sometimes you can struggle getting the early media. Um, but again, it just comes down to the network strength. So if early media is on as default, call kit is off. Now call kit at the uh, default, it'll send you a push notification and early media. With call kit, if I enable that, what that will do is now, instead of sending a push notification, um, we'll demonstrate these in a moment. Instead of sending a push notification, um, it's gonna actually call my phone like a standard phone call. So VDP connect home will come up on the screen and you can just answer it like a normal phone call. Irrespective of this being on or off, you don't get early media coming through. You just answer it, and then obviously you get the video of whoever's there. So we'll demonstrate the push notification, it's default setting. So I'll just arrow back and we'll go back to the home screen. So I'll just ring the doorbell. And what we get there, so that there is at the moment ringing the internal monitor and calling my phone at the same time. So we're on the Wi-Fi network here. Um, so we get the, the early media. So I haven't actually answered the call yet, but down here I can hit answer. That will load up the uh, door station and now I can just have a conversation um, w with whoever's there. Uh, I can unlock doors with whoever's there. So if you've got a gate or a front door, whatever you have, and then we can hang up that call there. So we'll test the same thing on 4G just to show. So on the 4G networking, exactly the same situation. We'll ring that front doorbell again. So as we see, we get the push notification come through and we do get the early media here. And again, I can just um, answer that one as needed and then have all the functions here on the screen as we've already been through. So if I go into the settings up the top here, and call. Now if I turn the call kit on, so irrespective of having early media on or off here, I, I don't get the early media coming through. So we'll demonstrate what the call kit does now. So ring the front doorbell, the actual phone rings as, as it would a normal phone call. So here it is here. So I can either accept or hang up. So with a push notification, normally you just get like a ding. With this, it's a better notification as such because obviously ringing your phone instead. So if I can answer that call, it takes me to the same page where I get the media up on the screen and all the same features down below here. So we'll just hang that one up there. So this can be connected to multiple phones. You just scan that QR code. Um, three phones is our recommendation for the maximum. You can go a couple more, but sometimes it might have an issue with the, with the push notifications if you're doing it to more, more phones. So if we hang that up down the bottom. So whoever effectively answers the call first hangs up from everybody else. Only one person can take the call, whether it be at the monitor or one of the connected mobile phones. 
So also on the app down here, so we've just been through the monitor part. So now we have the history as well. So we can go into the history and it'll show exactly what's happened on this, uh, this door station. So we can see that we've unlocked um, time and date stamp for the unlocking, uh, who's been calling. So we can flick through and actually just narrow it down for the monitors and the unlocking. Or that there is all. So that's the history of it there and back down to go to monitor. So that's effectively it for the app. So obviously it works in sleep mode as well. Um, that's all we need to know. If you have any further questions or queries, uh, just give your installer a call um, or alternatively, you can contact us at support at Thank you for watching.